Well, as we wrap up 2023, many people are dealing with the holiday mm. gift giving debt bomb and some are wondering how they're going to make ends meet. Right, those bills come in and you're like, oh my goodness. Yeah. Business editor and certified financial planner Rob Maloney says that problem is solvable with a budget that you can stick to, but there is another corner of your money he tells us is misunderstood and requires a commitment to getting your money right in 2024. Perhaps the most misunderstood and elusive of all financial planning concepts is the emergency fund because many people think I get this much coming home in my paycheck, I need to spend this much, but that's not how it's supposed to work. So this holiday season, how about you give yourself the gift of financial control? A recent bank rate survey says 60% of Americans don't have enough money saved to deal with a $1,000 emergency like a broken hot water heater or a blown engine, which are actually more expensive. Most of us will use a high interest rate credit card to pay for that, putting themselves further behind the financial eight ball. The solution is to save money in an emergency fund, but many don't even know how to get started with that. So we turn to certified financial planner Julie Quick of Cultivating Financial Wellness for some advice. If we make the, the goal way too big, it's going to seem too impossible to reach. And so starting with something small, like $1,000, $2,000, $5,000, and then just slowly inch our way up. When you start your emergency fund, it should be readily accessible in an interest-bearing money market account or savings account. This can take time, but planning a financial cushion will make you feel better when, not if, an emergency comes. And a couple thousand dollars is not the standard. Certified financial planners will tell you that a single working adult should have three months of living expenses set aside. A married couple with children should have at least six months of living expenses socked away. Still, certified financial planner Rick Kaler says the emergency fund is much more important than for home improvement needs or broken down cars. Those, he says, should be in your budget. He adds, as inflation eats away at our incomes, an emergency fund is for the really big concern. An emergency savings account is for when we lose our job. He puts that savings threshold at a whole different level. Six to 12 months of salary set aside, a stratospheric number. But he says it's something we all need to seriously consider if the economy shifts unexpectedly. So that's the number one thing that you could do to prepare for a recession. Not everybody loses their job in a recession. But certainly there are layoffs. Julie Quick believes for most of us, though, it comes down to calming fears. I have found that each person is really unique in what number they need to see in their emergency fund to be able to sleep at night. And so some of that just takes, you know, once you start accruing that emergency fund, um, you kind of develop your own comfort level. So in the end, it's really all about just getting started and then commit to putting an emergency fund in a budget and leave it there no matter what, because you can then buy yourself some peace of mind. In Detroit, Rod Maloney, Local 4. All right, thank you, Rod. Rod, by the way, does say he knows this is a difficult issue for many people, but with commitment, also knowledge, you can make your emergency fund a habit. He has some really great reading on the subject. We posted it for you on clickondetroit.com.